Welcome back to Gaining Some Steam for our third podcast edition here. For your Cincinnati steam as we dive into the Great Lakes Summer Collegiate Season alongside Ben Haller, I'm John Baldridge. And Ben, last time we talked, Seam were 3-3 three and three on the year. Now they sit at 5-6. and six. It's been a rocky road. They just lost to Richmond last night. A busy stretch coming up, six games before you get a day off. Steam active and trying to win some ball games and play for this playoff hunt. Yeah, I mean, it's just really been ups and downs to the start of the season. About two weeks in we are right now, and, you know, the way the schedule works, you get a round robin, first six games are against the other six teams in your division, then you go into pod play where you play the uh, other two teams in your pod twice. So Cincinnati went 3-3 three and three in that first round robin round, and then they went 2-2, two and two, another perfect 500 in that pod play. So, like I said, just, just the ups are kind of weighing the downs down right now in terms of, you know, a lot of offense – in the start of the season, the, the bats have kind of fallen asleep a little bit. They woke up a little bit last night, but that Xenia game on um, Sunday wasn't the uh, best offensive night for the steam either. But then the pitching, the bullpen has gotten better. But then you still go back to that 18-16 game against Xenia at, at their place at Xenia where it was just uh, – it's just the walks. I mean, yeah. It's really what it is. I mean, yeah. we've talked about it a lot and a lot. And, you know, it's one thing if other teams are just hitting Cincinnati really well. They really aren't. I mean, teams are hitting Cincinnati – decently well but there are just so many free bases given up we spoke about it last night we talked about it saying we think Cincinnati might have one of the best offenses in the south division and we go back to where we're three and three in our last podcast last Friday the steam had a double hitter that day against Hamilton lost the first game on that game that was restarted from Tuesday 14 to one they were won the second game they were tied 1-1 going to the seventh inning and a seven inning double hitter scored seven runs in that winning inning to sc- win the ball game 8-1. to one. Then they went to Xenia on Saturday where they put 18 across the board, won at 18-16, lost at Xenia on Sunday, as we mentioned, didn't score in that ball game 11 nothing. Postponement on Monday against Licking County and a, la- and a loss last night to Richmond 7-6. to six. But Cincinnati only has scored those six runs in one inning in the last 18 innings going back to that game where they scored 18 on Saturday. So it's been a very up-and-down offense, and the offense hasn't been stable inning in and inning, inning out and game in and game out for this team so far. Well, it's hard. I mean, I know you look at the last two games and you want to say it hasn't been stable, but you know, you're, you're always going to have slumps like that. No matter what level it is, no matter who you're playing, there's always going to be slumps like that. Overall, I do think the offense has been consistent. I think if you look at the numbers, and it's hard to compare north to south, but at least in the south division, I don't think there's any question Cincinnati has the best offense of the south. You know, everyone, you're playing the same competition, and the numbers are far better than anyone else. Still better than anyone in the north, but then once again, it's hard to compare because the pitching is a little different. The pitching, though, the the numbers are, are towards the bottom. The ERA, as of a couple of days ago, was was at the bottom of the league. Errors were second to last in the league, not just the South, but the whole league in general. So I, I, I know the uh, – I, I understand where you're coming from when you're talking about how the last couple of games you want to say the offense hasn't been stable, but there's always going to be slumps, and I have no worries about the offense right now at this time. You talk about the pitching, and we spoke about it. It's been up and down, and we've had good starts. William John has pitched well, Brandon Garula. Uh, Calvin Mitchell, but this bullpen has been the problem. We saw it last night when a chance to get out of the game for Noah Candell had the bases loaded with two outs in the bottom of the eighth and a tie game at six, walked home the leading run that went on to win the ball game for Richmond. How do you get the pitching to be more stable and more consistent? Well, I think I think it's a uh, – I kind of want to put an asterisk on that one yesterday. That was a really good performance from Candell. It was a uh, – a weird strike zone that we were seeing over there in Richmond. I think Cincinnati, that was a game where Cincinnati, it just wasn't their night. They, they, the fact that they were able to fight and get back into the game where it seemed like everything that was going against them is really impressive. William John had such a great performance, gave up three runs and I think a five-inning start, but only gave up one hard-hit ball the whole night. I know, I know we were – yeah, he went four, but he yeah. had a very good outing. Yeah. And that was the first in, outing he's gone this year where he's given up more than one run. So to go out there and him do consistently that, and since he hasn't pitched in two years, didn't pitch for his spring team in 21 or 22 for Cornell. So you're talking about a team that has so much death and, and opportunity is really what it is. I mean, you look at the schedule coming up, you've got winnable games. Xenia's the best team in the South right now, 10-3. and three, But you've got to beat the best teams if you want to be the best team. Then you get Southern Ohio, Grand Lake on Saturday, Hamilton M- S- Sunday and Monday before you get a day off on Tuesday and Wednesday. So winnable games in the next six. But Cincinnati, what do they need to do to be able to 
win those games and then fight for another day and be able to say we have a hunt for a chance to make the playoffs because only two teams do in the South. Well, I think if you really want to get logical and break this down, you start with the six games that are the round robin, and you go three and three in those. And then you play that first pod play, and you went two and two. So you're five and five. Now, I think a good goal is to going into your another round, rape, round robin play is improve by one game. So go four and two in these next round robin games. Now, it's hard to calculate now with that Licking County game being canceled and pushed all the way back to a couple of weeks at their place. But if you can go four and two and prove on one of those, that means just beating the teams that you beat the first time. So you beat Hamilton, you beat Southern Ohio, and you uh, you beat, I want to say, you lost to Grand Lake. Licking County. Licking County. Beat Licking County. And then also I was going to say either beat Richmond and you didn't do that, but you have a chance to beat Grand Lake. Yeah, yeah. So if you can improve on that 4-2, and two, then you go into pod play again where the play next week you play Hamilton Monday, Hamilton Thursday, Xenia Friday, Xenia Saturday. If you can go 3-1, and one, find a way to go 3-1 and one in those, you know, start to take care of Hamilton, that's going to be the key is how well you can play against Hamilton. But it's just improve by a game each time you break this schedule down. And then I think you, at the end of the season, you know, you, you keep improving on that and, and you're sitting pretty in second place in playoff picture. And I think the thing is the death. On this team, you talk about the middle infield. You got Brandon Rowe, who's hitting the ball so well, is the best average on the team. Sean Springer was named Player of the Week by the Great Lakes lead last week. Came in off start of the year on the DL, went six for twelve, batted five hundred on seven walks. You know, Cadiz is playing a little bit better. You're talking about Harrison Johnson, Ben Stewart have been stable, Jamison Richmond, but the infield and even with the outfield, you have May, you have Barnes, you have Nathan Merritt who will come back, and there's a lot of in other guys, Max Freeze, who's been out for a couple games, but just so many guys that you can lead on, and that's why we talk about the hitting. It's like one guy might have might not have it one day, but somebody else is going to take a spot, and they're doing so well consistently because somebody's there to hit the ball and do well. Well, it's tough. I mean, it's not easy when you're in these summer league situations. You have so many guys that you have to get at bats. And it's just, it's just difficult for everybody to be on, but that speaks to the depth of Cincinnati and, and how many guys they have offensively, but still what they're producing and how much everyone's getting playing time. And that just speaks to a lot of guys. I mean, I think you had five or six guys hitting around 400, and we're almost, we're what, two weeks into the season? I mean, that's impressive in and it of itself. And there are guys like William John, Ben Stewart, who have not been producing the best offensive numbers, but they're starting to break out, and you saw them produce a little bit last night, and those two are two guys that I would not bet on staying cold for a while. And I spoke with Alex Dickey about that last night on the pregame show. Talk about you have to wear many different hats. You have a loaded roster. You have guys inactive and active every single night. And making those substitutions, does that come in meetings? Does that come in text messages, one-on-one -on -one conversations? And he says, you know, you just have to wear many different roles. And you have to be very consistent. With your time management has to be a big thing. And I think as Cincinnati, with not a huge coaching staff, we don't see – Mark Taylor there every single night, the bench coach, but he's there consistently a lot. And, and Tommy Thaman's there every night, but you don't see Sam Zabal, the bullpen coach, there every single day. But Alex Dickey, as the manager, happened to have a big role and have many guys come in. And there's different guys every single year on this roster, but just finding guys that can fit these different roles. And I think Cincinnati has a team right now, I would say, and you can agree to this or not, I would say they have a chance to go for a long run because the South isn't the toughest division. I would say the North is much tougher. I would say Cincinnati right now with the way they're playing and the way they can hit the ball, they could go out and put up 15 runs or they could go out and put out zero. But if they can be able to do it consistently, I think we can find a way of good pitching to win the ball games. Yeah, absolutely. I think if you look at talent wise and if the bullpen starts to come around, it's maybe the most talented roster in the South. I don't know what you're saying about the North being better than the South, but I think it's just going to look that way because the North is more of a pitcher-dominated division and the South is more of a hitter-dominated division. It's just the way we're looking right now. But over – I mean, yeah, you're right. I mean, it's a team that has a lot of potential on the roster. Once again, if, if more guys can stay consistent and you have some good bullpen guys, it's a team that can go on a run. And there are just so many guys that can contribute to that. But I think – with the bullpen, with the offense, we talked about it a lot. You can lean on. You start to now have a five-man solid rotation. William John, who pitched really well yesterday. Brady Lankel's going today. you got Brenda Grulli, you got Calvin Mitchell, you got Noah Sakonai. And I think going forward, that's a really good five. And that's with that starting five, you're going to get a chance to, to win pretty much every single day. And we spoke about it last week, just guys kind of coming into form. You know, they've been with their college team. Maybe they haven't played in a while. And to be able to – 
get kind of those roles back to form and feel like they feel adjusted to this ball club, being in the Cincinnati area, being around these guys. And we're going to take a break. We'll have Charlie James on next. He writes for the Cincinnati Steam. He's also our ones and twos doing our producer work and on-site engineer. He'll come on here in a minute and talk about his news and notes and what he thinks how the Steam are doing so far this year. We'll be back in a moment on the Cincinnati Steam, Gaining Some Steam podcast. This podcast is brought to you by Champions Grill, your official post-game party destination of your Cincinnati Steam. Welcome you back to Gaining Some Steam, joined by now our on-site engineer and producer, Charlie James. And he also writes for your Cincinnati Steam, if you see him on the website and so forth. And, Charlie, thanks for jumping on and give us your thoughts on the Steam so far this year. Absolutely. Thanks for having me. So take me through how you think the team's planned through the first 11 games and what you thought, how they done. I mean, I, I really think, like, that – the offense and the, the offense and the defense are two like they are polar opposites right now. I, I think we couldn't get we could get better on offense, but right now where we're sitting is is definitely comfortable. Uh, but on defense, I mean, it, it's it's been tough sometimes. There's been some struggles, but I think that that also comes with just having a roster that hasn't played together, and you know, having like Coach Dickey's not afraid to experiment with new lineups and stuff, and putting people in uncomfortable positions to try to make them better players, which. I respect, and I think is a, like why we're playing baseball in the summer. Um, but yeah, I think it's going to be. There's nowhere. Else, there's nowhere else to go but up right now. So I think. I think it's going to be a good uh, conclusion to the season. I'm excited. Yeah. Aside from the game, Charlie, you're someone like a, a different from John and I. You have been around the Cincinnati team. You're a West Side kid. You said as if you used to go to some games as, as families. What's it kind of been like working, finally getting to work and intern for a team that you grew up watching and being a fan of? Uh, I was just talking to, to uh, Chase Popwell the other day, and, you know, he uh, we were talking about watching the Steam when we were little, and it's crazy that I used to go up and, like, ask these guys for autographs and stuff and, like, sign baseballs. I still have signed baseballs from Steam from, like, 2013 or so. Um, but, yeah, they used to play at West High uh, right up on Glenway, and – and that was like our our like summer tradition because I mean we're in the dog days right now. There's nothing on. There's no like there's no football. There's no basketball. There's no hockey. Um, so we just go over to the steam, watch them play, and that was kind of like my introduction to a higher level of baseball was watching the steam play at West High, um, and then working for them. I mean it's it's I I don't want to say it's the same, but it kind of is. Just you're still a fan. Yeah. You just have you know. You just have, like, a, a responsibility to carry out during the game. You're not just sitting there watching. But, I mean, to some degree, you are just sitting there watching. You know, it's it's just kind of it's, it's kind of like being a fan. It's taking me back a little, a little nostalgic, not going to lie. Well, you also get the chance we spoke about it to call the games at Elder where you went to high school. And then um, – but for you, and I've read some of your your writing, some of your stories you've written about the team. But take, take us through, take your listeners through some of the stuff you wrote and posted on the Steam website and – some of the stuff you really wanted to hit on so far on this season for this team on the writing side. Yeah, I mean, um, more or less just keeping the fans updated because I know, like, there's, what is it, like 38 games or so crammed into two months. So, like, you're not going to be able to watch or make it out to all of them, especially for uh, players whose families aren't in town, uh, like people, like, from Florida or, or um, yeah, or, you know, around the country. So I think it's really important to, to keep those people in the loop uh, with, like, weekly updates, post-game reviews, pre-game, uh, any kind of articles we can get out. And, um, you know, it is fun to see, like, if, you, if, you're, if your parents aren't in town and, you know, your, your family in Florida is reading about you doing some cool stuff in Cincinnati. I mean, that's just a cool, that's just a cool thing to have happen. And I, I, uh, I feel a little bit of an obligation to get that to the players that are, you know, they're making me look good. They're making us look good. So I might as well make them look good back. Right. right. <laughs> yeah, Charlie, you have a different perspective Ed, than we do and than it's, most fans do especially. Hate to put you on the spot here. Who has been the most fun or maybe the most interesting player to write stuff for or to work with? Um, most interesting player, I'm probably going to have to say uh, either Ben Stewart or Riley Parker, uh, someone that has a home run. You know, or yeah. something because you know, like, I'm not like, you know, it is it is just the way things go. The statistics kind of speak for themselves a little bit in terms of the writing end of things. So it's it's a lot easier to write about people when they're doing things. Um, and so, yeah, I mean, like Brennan Rowe, like people that are just slapping the ball around right now. I mean, they're they're easy to write for it, and they're they're fun to watch. So, 
you mentioned the difference between hitting and pitching right now. And you've got to know Riley Park. You've mentioned a lot about Florida. He's from Florida. But, you know, he's been a crucial part, as a lot of these guys have been to the hitting side. What has been so helpful, so exciting about this hitting for Cincinnati? And, and you've been a fan of your whole life of this team. Have you ever seen it like this, where you've been able to put runs across the board pretty much so easily this team have done so far the first 11 games? Yeah, I think some of that comes down to the fact that, you know, Playing at XU, the poles are 310, and, you know, center field is 350. Um, and at, at Elder, we still haven't seen a home run at Elder, and I don't think we will all year. I've only seen two there my entire life. Um, but, I mean, I in terms of if I can remember the last time uh, this, like, runs were being scored at this volume, um, I honestly, I don't think I can say that I remember the last time that we were putting across runs this consistently and with, like, with this much – volume we put up 28 against uh was that southern Southern ohio Ohio, yeah yeah. and um but yeah i mean like on the pitching side uh it's definitely getting better i mean you can you guys talked about the starting the starting rotation that we're kind of settling into it's absolutely getting better and uh, i think you know like i said there's nowhere to go but up for this for especially on the pitching front right now so i think it's going to get better who has surprised you the most on the Cincinnati team? I mean, offensively especially, there are some guys that we didn't really expect to put up these numbers, but 11 games to the season. Talk about it. We've got five or six guys hitting around 400. It's unreal. Uh, I have, I think the the guy that's maybe, I don't know about surprise, but definitely like made it like, you know, struck me as a kind of a wow factor guy is James McMahon. Uh, because uh, I remember when he committed to Louisville, I was like our freshman year of high school. It was like a huge deal when we heard about it. And um, and I uh, this is the first time I've seen him since then, so um, you know it's it's cool seeing him. I I, I kind of lost track of his baseball career, but he came back for the steam and he's he's killing the ball right now in the in the field. He's he's doing really well playing first and third, and um, you know I mean he he's having a great season right now. So I, I think he's definitely been you know a, a good surprise, a pleasant surprise for this team so far. You being a Cincinnati native, a guy that grew up here, a guy that went to Elder High School, all Cincinnati, you know, born and raised. Me, I'm not that way. Ben's that way. He's a Cincinnati guy. How important is this Great Lakes summer collegiate league? How important is summer ball to these guys, not just the guys on the team, but fans like yourself, players, people that end up working for the steam? Just talk about that that bond you have, and if there is one at all, with Cincinnati Steam Baseball with the Great Lakes Summer Collegiate League. Yeah, I mean, it's been around since, you know, what was it, 2006 was the beginning of the, of the steam, and they've always been – no more than 15 minutes away from where I live. And so if you're not doing anything on, like, a Tuesday in the summer, like, why not go to a baseball game? I mean, it's free. It's quality baseball. I mean, it's collegiate baseball. Um, and, you know, even even the wooden bat factor makes it a little bit more cool because I remember, like, when we were little, when they, when players would break their bats, they would just hand them to us, and we'd just run around with broken bats, which was, I don't know, a little dangerous. But, <laughs> um, uh, but yeah, I mean, I think they're definitely, like, from the working side of things, there's definitely a bond. Like uh, Tony Brumfield, our GM, my dad coached him in basketball when he was at Lords, when he was in grade school. Um, so, like, I, I I didn't know we had that connection, but I, I do know now. And um, and so, and, like, the, even the guys on the grill, Ozzy Bounds, like, he coached me in football when I was little. He coached me at Lords. Uh, he's been around me my entire life. And uh, there's definitely some people that, you know, they, they – there, there is a bond, you know, like you said, uh, between the fans and the, and the and the staff and the team. Like we're both Cincinnati guys. You're a West Side guy. I'm an East Side guy. But I can respect. You know, everyone always talks about the kind of bond and how different it is out over on the West Side. And I and I can respect that. I could see it a little bit with this steam team. Um, you, you, once again, we talk about the perspective that you have, and you're a little closer to the team. What's the team chemistry like? I mean, it's hard. You have so many guys coming from different places, a lot of guys who have never met each other coming into the season. I mean, you have some guys who played last year, but not a ton. So what's kind of been the chemistry and bond like within that team? I mean, walking down around the dugout, like, before game time, I think that all I see is just a bunch of guys having fun. They're super loose, and I think that that kind of stems from from, uh, Coach Dickey, just kind of like his personality. I think it's kind of rubbed off on the rest of the team. Because I mean, they're just they're just out there having fun, even even when you, you know, even when we're down eleven to nothing or eleven to one or whatever that game was against Xenia, um, they're still just having a good time. They're still playing. They're still just playing a game, and um, and that is I I can't I I think that that might be the most important quality of this team is how loose that they play and how much fun that they have when they're out there. Um, I mean, around the dugout, I don't think there's ever been there's ever there's never been a negative moment. I think even in the bullpen, uh, you know, as things you know haven't gone our way pitching wise 
um, they're still just having fun. They're having a good time. They're loose. They're excited about playing baseball, and, and I think that, that that's translating into wins. You've made one road trip with us so far this year to Hamilton. Of course, you'll go down to Southern Ohio where you go to school at Athens at Ohio University. Talk about that real fast. I know – you know, you want to get into broadcast, not broadcast, but you want to work in the production side, working as an engineer, an on-site producer. Talk about what you want to do with your career and where you want to go after you get out of school. Well, um, definitely, I mean, going out to Hamilton was kind of a little bit of a wake-up call because we had to do the first, not only was our Wi-Fi situation <laughs> Terrible. You just saw it last night, or yeah, yeah, I heard. We couldn't even get on the air last <laughs> night. <laughs> I heard about that. Um, but I mean, like, I had to do there. We, there was only one table, like folding white table, in all of Hamilton, I guess. So, <laughs> um, I I did like the first three innings sitting on the ground, uh, just like you know sitting crisscross, and and that was like I'm not gonna lie, it was fun, but I couldn't see the game. I was like below the the wall. Um, so, I mean, that was fun, got, getting to do it. Uh, getting to make my own graphics and, and putting them up, like kind of sequencing them with the game is fun. That's an interesting challenge. That's something I got into at OU. Um, but, yeah, I mean, I, I didn't know kind of – I didn't really know what I wanted to do. I knew I was, you know, a journalism major. I wanted to write. I wanted to, um, you know, do some, some commentating for some different type of games. Um, but I hadn't really considered the production side of things because I always, you know, I, I'm more comfortable talking than I am doing anything else, as you guys can probably tell. <laughs> but, um, yeah, I, I got into uh, OU. I worked with them with ESPN for a while. I did their men's and women's basketball, their men, or volleyball, and field hockey, soccer, all that stuff. And, and they kind of just nudged me in the right direction that I felt like I was just looking for, like, an opportunity, and that's what they gave me. And, I, I you know, I haven't looked back, and it's been, it's been awesome. It's been great. I mean, yeah, for the people who don't know, Charlie is pretty much handles everything yeah. b- behind the scenes with the graphics and anything you'll see on the broadcast, the scoreboard on home games especially. If the scoreboard's working and it's updating my pitch, that means he's doing it and not me. <laughs> so um, he, he gets to do most of that. But um, I, I just I, I want to ask if there's a specific moment from this year that, 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 that's been your favorite so far through the first 11 games that, that's really stuck with you. Uh, with the Grand Slam. Was it Riley? It was Riley's Riley. Grand Riley Slam. Parker, yeah. That was great. I've never seen a Grand Slam live before. Like, wow. even for really? the Reds, I've never seen a Grand Slam. And, like, that's just the best, you know? <laughs> Pitching-wise, you spoke about how you think it needs to get better, right? And how is Cincinnati able to do that? Um, I think it's just going to come with appearances, you know? Like, with people getting reps and playing, you know? It's definitely, like... It's definitely come up. Like we're we're pitching better with in relief. We're pitching better closing, um, and I think again it's just going to come with time. Like like anything in baseball, I think it's just going to go. Like towards the end of the year, I think we're going to be playing our best baseball at the end of the year, which is what they say you want to be doing. Um, and and I think that you know, it, with time, it's only going to get better. You know, these guys are collegiate baseball players. They've been around. They know what slumps feel like, and they know what or how to fix their you know their mechanics if anything is wrong. Um, so I think, you know, it, it's just going to come with time. You got anything else? Should we good? But we appreciate it, Charlie. You were, you know, jumped on last minute. We couldn't grab a guest from the team. So you come down and talked about your writing, talked about the team, talked about your job with the steam and college. We appreciate all your time today. And uh, that's going to wrap it up for our podcast this week, our third edition here on Gaining Some Steam, your Cincinnati Steam podcast. For Ben Haller, I'm John Baldridge. We'll see you at the ballpark. Come on out as the team gets set tonight to take on Xenia at 5.05, and this will be up later. And we appreciate you doing so. You can catch it on anywhere you get your podcast. So, so long, and we'll hear from you next week.